Hello, and welcome to Queen's Old Library. Thank you very much for joining us for the 2020 edition of Open Cambridge. We are very glad to welcome you to the medieval library of Queen's College and explore with you its history and treasures. The old library dates from the foundation of Queen's College in 1448. The college was founded by Margaret of Anjou, the wife of King Henry VI of England from the Lancaster family. The coat of arms of Queen's College derives from those of her father, René, Duke of Anjou. The college was later refounded by Elizabeth Woodville, wife of the Yorkist King Edward IV. Queen's was one of the very few colleges to have a room specifically designed to house a library in the mid-15th century, and it still remains closest to its original state. The old library lies on an east-west axis, with one row of plain glass windows looking south onto Old Court to use the maximum available light. The windows on the north side originally looked onto the buildings of a Carmelite friary. The stained glass now in the north side windows was purchased from the friary when it was dissolved in 1537, and now represents one of the finest collections of 15th century English rondels. The internal design of the library room comprised 10 two-tier reading lecterns with double slopes arranged to stand out from the walls. This layout allowed room for no more than 200 manuscript volumes. Today, these medieval lecterns form the base of the current bookshelves. The location of the chain bars to which the volumes were chained up in the 15th century and early 16th century is still traceable. An inventory attributed to the college's first president, Andrew Dockett, records the manuscript titles present on each lectern and indicates that the library had reached capacity by 1472. Although all of these manuscript titles had disappeared in 1538, by this time the college still possessed one of the largest contemporary collections in Cambridge, consisting mainly this time of printed books. In 1612, the lecterns were converted into bookshelves. First, the parts which currently sit at the top were added on top of the medieval lecterns. Later, in the mid-17th century, additional shelving was inserted between the lecterns and the tops, creating the current bookshelves. The books, shelved flat in the 15th century, started to stand upright in the 16th century with their spines facing inward. By the middle of the 17th century, it became a more common practice to shelf books with their spines out. By just glancing at the shelves, we can see one of the most valuable features of the collection, the bindings. Indeed, many of them are contemporary or near-contemporary with the works they encase. Bindings of note include a silkskill binding, a binding from the workshop of renowned French binder Jean Grolier, and very fine examples of Cambridge binder Garrett Godfrey. Godfrey's bindings are particularly identifiable as the binder frequently used the same tools, including a roll comprising a lion, a wyvern, a griffin, and Godfrey's own initials. The library also owns interesting examples of recycling at play within the binding trade. It was indeed very common for binders to use fragments of manuscripts, called manuscript waste, as part of the binding structure. Manuscript waste could also be used as book covers. A recent find has unveiled a fragment of an old binding pasted inside a new one. The collection in the old library covers the whole range of subjects studied by Queen's members from the early modern time, including theology, classics, history, philosophy, astronomy, medicine, and English literature. The library's collection expanded through the regular purchase of new works, some of which were recorded in the library's account books, and through donations. Indeed, during its existence, the library has also benefited from a number of major benefactions, most of them by former Queen's members, including past president Isaac Milner, the Cambridge Platonist John Smith, and the 16th century Secretary of State, Sir Thomas Smith. Born to humble beginnings, 
Thomas Smith first became a student at Queen's and then a fellow, before reaching the uppermost echelons of university life as the first professor of civil law and then vice-chancellor. He later achieved high office in the administration of two monarchs, Edward VI and Elizabeth I. His library was well-renowned and contained over 400 books, a great number for a personal library. Smith will bequeath all of his Latin and Greek books to Queen's, upon condition that they chain them up in their library. Unfortunately, these instructions were not followed to the letter as the college donor's book records only 80 titles under Smith's bequests. Much more than simply a record of the broad interests of a Renaissance man, Smith's book collection offers great examples of active reading. Indeed, some of his books are full of doodles, underlinings and marginal notes. The drawings are particularly fine. We can spot portraits of famous rulers such as Henry VIII or Francis I of France, sketches of cities, or various symbols such as the upside down crown to flag up the death of a ruler, or the upright crown used to represent a coronation. All the drawings in the margins reflect what, or whom, has been discussed in the printed text. Although not all Queen's volumes were annotated as extensively and as neatly as Thomas Smith's ones, many bear evidence of use by past readers, whether they are scholarly annotations, poems, or hand color decorations. By looking at the numerous ways in which Queen's volumes have been used, beautified, or defaced, we gain a window into the lives and thinking of their readers. The old library has now been in use for more than 570 years by Queen's members and by external researchers. A catalogue of the library by Thomas Hartwell Horn was published in 1827, but it presents now numerous inaccuracies. Since 2015, the old library team has undertaken the systematic cataloguing of the collection and the records are now available on iDiscover, the online catalogue of Cambridge Libraries. Although the old library is generally closed to the public, it regularly opens its doors for public events and exhibitions. Do have a look at our website for more information. The website also contains digital versions of our past exhibitions and a provenance and binding database that allows you to explore our unique collections. Thank you very much for watching this video created for the 2020 edition of Open Cambridge. We look forward to seeing you again in the old library soon.